talk to you. Scooter graduated from Santa Heights in 1997 with a biology degree. Remember, that's what I do. And the recipient, uh, our next recipient, graduated in 1991 with her biology degree. So I'm very proud of both of them. Thank you. My pleasure, uh, obviously, being a graduate bio, fellow biology degree holder um, to induct Kelly Canino Lupo. Um, the reason I kind of have this honor is I have uh, been able to talk to Coach Mello, Doug Mello, who was the original founder of both the men's and women's soccer team at Siena Heights, and uh, have been in talk with him. And he has a basically an induction speech that I'll read for Kelly. The first thing I want to say is that uh, I'm a Siena guy, as you probably figured out, but um, I really love our history things that we've done. That's what, as a coach, I try to preach to our kids that they're leaving something behind. And the legacy that Kelly, Julie Jertorish, Abby English, Shelly Vanderbeek players I've never even known about, we try to live and I try to make our players own up to that legend of what they created, that environment, every day, similar to what our men's basketball program has done as well. So without further ado, this is uh, basically straight from Coach Doug Mello, who is now the head men's coach at Hendricks College in Alabama, I believe. I don't think there's a, I don't think a tougher competitor ever put on the same soccer jersey, man or woman, than Kelly Canino. To say Kelly had a fierce determination to win when stepping on a pitch would be an understatement. Not giving 100% on every challenge was not an option for her. This never say die attitude was infectious, infectious with the rest of our squad. The team was not only incredibly talented, but could mix it up with any opponent who made the mistake of trying to muscle us off our game. We not only beat out Michigan State University and Kalamazoo College, but we won the fights as well. During her tenure, we were consistently ranked in the national top ten, along with being number one ranked team during the 1988 regular season and finishing third at NEI National Tournament in Texas. A knock on the women's game has always been a lack of quality heading, not Kelly. She excelled in scoring goals off the of headers. In my 30 years of collegiate coaching, Kelly's heading prowess is legendary. She scored a dozen of key goals for us in the air, none more important than the match winner versus Williamson College in the regional final in Ohio. It says he remembers this moment as it was only yesterday. It's sudden death overtime, Ford Dawn Huggins goes down with an ankle injury. After she shoots the ball, it goes off a defender. It says as the trainer and him were checking on Dawn at the top of the box, the rest of the squad huddled around. Kelly says to Lisa Ricardo, who, took the, who takes the corners, Put the ball on my bleeping head. Lisa, who was jogging away, turns and winks at it. I get Dawn off the field and watch in amazement as Lisa sends a perfect driven ball to the back post where Kelly hurls herself over a few over a slew of players and deposits the ball in the back of the net for the win and sending them to nationals at Hardin Simmons University in Texas. I still get goosebumps thinking about it. Kelly was quite a leader on our championship squad who led by example. I enjoyed her sly laugh, big hair, and mischievous nature. Most of the wacky antics that occurred throughout the seasons, Kelly, along with Stitch, Shelly, Lisa, Julie, or Audra, had a hand in. Kelly Canino Lupo, congratulations on your well-deserved induction into the St. Heights University Athletic Hall of Fame. You are joining a fraternity of talented student athletes as coaches who represents the Saints with distinction at the highest level. It was a pleasure to coach you. All the best to you and your family. Without further ado, Kelly Canino.
and why I'm standing in front of you tonight. So I owe those guys a great thank you. My time at Siena Heights was both memorable and enlightening. Being a student athlete, it can be very challenging to balance your classwork with excelling out on the field. I learned very quickly how to prioritize my schedule to keep my academics first without hindering my playing time. For that, I owe a special thanks to my advisor and my mentor, Carl Castor. He understood my time constraints as an athlete and supported me throughout my four-year career. He always made himself available to help me keep up with any material I may have missed due to our traveling schedule, regardless of what time of day or what day of the week. So thank you, Carl. I appreciate it. The second memories I have from Sienna Heights are priceless, from scoring those game-winning goals that you just heard about to the bench playing brawls that you just heard about. Beating Michigan State was awesome. And of course, when we went to that national tournament, ranked the number one team in the country. It was a very sad day for me when our soccer team had to come to an end my senior year. But I am very thankful that I had the opportunity to play with such great team, teammates on such a great team and play for such a great coach as Coach Mello. I don't know how he did it, but he managed to recruit some of the best players from Michigan as well as all over the country. From California, Colorado, New York, Texas, he put together one of the best teams in the history of this institution. Coach Mello knew how to bring out the best of each one of his players. He taught us how to play as a team and how to be a family and pick each other up after a loss. For that, I believe all my teammates would agree that he is one of the main reasons our team was so successful for those two straight years. So thank you, Coach Mello. I'd also like to thank the Hall of Fame Committee for considering me as one of their top student athletes. This is truly a great honor for me and puts an exclamation mark on my career here at Siena Heights. Again, thank you to everyone who has made this possible. Coach Mello, my teammates, the committee, Carl, Coach Oliver for being so persistent in tracking me down, and anyone that I might have left out that made this possible for me. And I also would like to thank my husband, Christian, for supporting me and helping me put this down into words because I'm not very good at oration, so thank you.